If you are not moving your wrists correctly in the backswing, you are missing out. If you want more power, consistency, and pure strikes, you have to watch this video right to the end because top level coach Alex Riggs and myself are gonna help you understand how to do this correctly and get you crushing that ball better than ever. Let's get stuck in. All right, Riggs, that was the best of the day for me. Uh, felt really good off the face, lots of compression. And a big part of that is not necessarily all about the lag at the moment of impact. It was what I did in the backswing in yes. regards to width, right? And we see a lot of players, amateur golfers, who struggle with ball striking would tend to get quite narrow. And a lot of that is an understanding of the difference between using your arms or loading your wrists correctly yes. to create the width. So let's talk about that. For sure. I think a lot of players, they under rotate. Mm -hmm. They don't create enough turn or pivot through the body. Mm -hmm. And then as a result, you see a lot of lead elbow folding. Yep. Now, these players, they might think that they've used their wrists, yeah. but their wrists have actually been quite passive in a movement like that. There's no leverage. There's, it's very difficult for us to actually utilize like a good body sequence coming down if we've loaded in that way. Mm -hmm. I was doing an online lesson just before I shot these videos and I freeze frame the player at lead arm parallel. And let's say this is where the majority of professionals would be. Yes. Specifically from this face on view. Left arm for the right hand level with the ground, club sharp somewhat creating an L shape, sh shape structure. Now the player that I was working with, they had this same structure, but it was created by doing this. So yes. from face on, that camera angle there might look like this is still level with the ground and this might still look like it's actually pitched up straight but if i from this position move my arms back out in front of me what do we notice about this shaft angle here riggs yeah there's been little to no leverage created here mm -hmm. so there's essentially there's no load that we've created in through that trail wrist yeah so one of the best checkpoints for creating better load early in the backswing is actually earlier isn't it yes it's by the time that the end of the grip from this face on view is almost just on the outside of the trail leg we would yes. like to see the club shaft level with the ground and the hands anywhere from in front of the trail leg just outside and that player that i was working with if they went back to when the club shaft was level with the ground they were about in this position correct and then the last little bit where i freeze framed was all this folding yes but a t-rex action at the top so we need to make sure that we're creating some better load earlier. How do we do that? We need to understand how to load the trail wrist. Okay. And the best way to do that is to isolate the trail arm. So take the lead hand off the golf club. Okay. Hold it only in the trail hand. Yep. I'd hold it a little bit lower, get it into its normal position. Mm -hmm. Start the swing off with a little bit of pivot. Now I want you to be able to isolate this feeling. So without moving anything else, start creating that extension, a little bit of that hinge feeling in this wrist. Now, as you pivot or turn to the top of your swing, what you're gonna try and feel is that that trail arm is gonna feel like it just goes along for the ride. Yeah, for sure. And we just did a video about using the lead arm only, and we'll attach this into this one, to create the sensation of width at the top of the swing here. In this video, we're talking specifically about how to create that load on the shaft to get the compression using the wrists rather than folding the arms. Exactly. And isolating this works wonders in giving you the awareness of how to control the golf club correctly through this section of the swing to give it that light feeling that we were talking about in the yes. other video. And ensuring from here, this connection point, which is going to be from our back arm onto our body, stays in constant contact throughout to the top of the swing. Now, a lot of players are gonna look at this rigs and they're gonna go, well, is that the end of your swing? Right. It's so short. Yes. But the golf swing is a dynamic fluid motion. We have a certain elasticity to our muscles, which in a golf swing would bring it up, okay? But yes. drilling it, we need to be slow and we need to be conscious. For sure, if we're going through this slowly and we're doing the movements correctly, I think most of us, we wouldn't have the mobility to get the golf club to parallel. I, I think that that's a concept a lot of people assume and a swing has to get to parallel yeah. and if it doesn't it's a short swing they're not going to be able to maximize power but if I do my movements to the most strict level mm -hmm. and I'm reasonable mobility there's no way I'm getting that club to parallel if yeah. I'm doing it in a static way yeah for sure and we see 
one commonality between the best ball strikers in the world would be their ability to get the hands back in front of the chest through this section of the golf swing. Yes. And the longer that the hands move away from the midline of the chest in the backswing and in the downswing, well, this is where all the scooping, mm -hmm. the stalling out, the flipping, the chicken winging, Correct. endless goes on and on and on. Correct. So it really is about understanding how to load that golf club correctly. So you're saying the trail arm drill or the trail hand drill, the back arm, just using that, ensuring that we're getting a bit of turn, a bit of wrist we're setting and then turning to the top. Anything else you'd add there where you think players could slightly get this wrong and take it down a wrong direction? I think it is possible that you still might see players whose trail elbow might work back around behind the rib cage more mm. so than it should. Mm -hmm. And in which case we can always use the lead hand, tuck it underneath the tricep of that trail arm. In this case, it's tough to get this drill wrong. So you're going to apply just a little bit of that pressure. Yeah. Now this is loaded. You're going to bring in your turn. And what we'll see here is that as long as you've got this hand here, there's no way that's going too far back behind you. Yeah, and a great little reference here, guys, if I simply face that camera and go down, you can see we've almost got a square form from my shoulders, uh, my elbows and my arms, which is the same as a dress here. So hinging and a bit of turn into this section of the swing, ensuring that we're getting and maintaining that same feeling. Put two hands on, you know what, that feels really good. A lot of width there. Yes. Legs but also, more importantly, that load in the wrists, which is required for us to get that compressed strike. Correct. If you go back into that spot again, you start seeing how easy it will be for you to get your arms back underneath you. From right here, because of where these elbows are, it's going to be easy for you to be able to get the arms underneath you. And this is that, that tour pro position that we see everybody in. Keep those compliments going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's groove in this tour pro position. Uh, we'll use the back of the right hand once more just to get the sensation. So using the torso, a little bit of hinge, turning, 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 creating the right amount of structure and width. Okay, let's put it together. Not one down there. 